Um, I go by Rooster. Uh, I'm here. Why is that? I, I can't. I can't tell you that. Yeah, it's That's strange. Well, I, I scratch around a lot, peg oh, for stuff. Oh, you know, oh, it, oh, it oh, happens. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. About it's just that. a natural thing. You know, it, it's awkward. It's a tick. Sometimes. I'm sorry to, to point that out, or, or if yeah. there's a sensitive issue. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, it's a name I got. I got about. Let's see here, five years ago as a result of the Mohawk. So, oh, oh, okay. so yeah, I mean, I know you didn't see that coming. But the oh, Mohawk, you're the guy with the Mohawk at CPAC. Oh, right, okay. Dude, there's at least a dozen of us here. At least. At least two. <laughs> two. Okay. Yeah. So what brings you to CPAC? Um, well, I'm, I'm a conservative individual, actually. Contrary to my appearance, I, uh, I hold a lot of conservative ideals, especially fiscal conservative. So. How is that contrary? Uh, well, most people make the uh, the the reasonable assumption, well, they think it's reasonable, that I'm liberal just based solely upon my appearance. Are you saying that, like, liberals try to do crazy things to get attention and just try to be flashy and, like, play on emotional appeals in order to convince people that they're right? No, not at all. I'm saying liberals try to do things that are flashy to generate emotional appeal to... Yeah, no, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. But you're a conservative, so what, what's it been like, and, and, and what's your experience here? What are you getting out of being at CPAC? Uh, well, you know what? It's been a lot of fun for me. I, I get a lot, of, a lot of real positive feedback from individuals. I mean, some of it I don't know is really deserved because they're like, hey, you're diversity. I'm like, hey, I'm... Hair diversity? Right, right, yeah. Like, hey, I'm another white guy. Watch out. <laughs> but, the conservative uh, movement will take any diversity they can get at this point, I think. I, I think, generally speaking, that's correct, yeah. And so, I mean, I, am, I embrace it. I mean, I've had fun with it. I've had the same haircut for eight years now so it must get boring no you can change the flavor up a little bit you know i've got i've got green and orange for patties so yeah so but no here it's been great i mean of course you still have some of the some of the older conservatives who um who give me those kind of crappy looks like what in the hell's wrong with you but for the most part it's been generally positive and you know it's garnered a lot of a lot of fun attention i mean i've i've done several interviews and stuff as a result of it so how cliche of me <laughs> like I said, I just embrace it. You know, it's good. It's good. But I mean, it's been it's been interesting because I'm. It allows me to bring kind of issues that I feel are important. It allows me to talk about them on camera with pe people who don't necessarily have that other opportunity to, to see it. And it's better received coming from me than from some generic sixty year old white man. Like you're gonna turn into someday. That's the goal. Yeah. And your hair's going to go white, and then I'm you're going to look like McCain, right? <laughs> I don't know if I'll look like McCain. I'll probably, I'll probably uh, sh just shave it at that point. But <laughs> have, the, have the dignity. I, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So what does it mean to be a conservative to you? Uh, to me, I mean, it, I feel like it, it means being uh, fiscally responsible is one of my, one of my biggest issues. Um, just this unsustainable debt that we're accruing, running, running trillion-dollar deficits annually is just absolutely absurd. So I feel like as, as a fiscal conservative, we need to definitely trim that down. Um, I also believe in states' rights. You know, the Tenth Amendment is a very important thing to me. And so I feel like the federal government has far outgrown its intended purpose. Wait, so you're, you're a collectivist. You believe states have rights as opposed to individuals have rights? Oh, no, I believe in individual rights, but I believe that the states, the states are, are um, more accountable to their citizenry. Well, if you have a state government that's, that's elected, right, you're, you're saying that an individual doesn't have a right to live in their home free of the coercion of the majority there who votes for a politician that they might disagree with. So it sounds like a very you know, anti-minority collectivist idea that, that a state has a right. If anything, if a state is created by the people, it doesn't have any rights that the people don't have. And if, if you own yourself and I own myself and, and, and it's, I don't have the right to, to violate your, your self-ownership, I don't have a, a right. To, to steal your property, you know, why is it that when a state is formed and a majority elects a government to, you know, hire tax collectors in order to, to fund the state, that then they can violate your rights? It sounds like it's a little uh, bit of a contradiction there. Well, but see, but see, you're taking what I'm saying and, and pushing it to the extreme, which, which, honestly, if people elect people that are going to take away their rights, they deserve to have their rights taken away. What we need well, to put no, 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 I'm talking about the minority. So, like, say, say, 51 percent vote to take away the rights of 49 percent. You're, you're in under the system that you're advocating, where states have rights. Your 49 percent is just kind of screwed. Well, I mean, if it, if they're legitimately taking away a citizens' rights, they can also take that to the court and combat that. So it's okay to take away someone's rights if they can complain in court about it. How's that working today? I, I think you just completely twisted that because that's not what I said.
Well, you said if someone's rights are violated, we get to go to court, right? But that court is run by government. So if the government is violating your rights, you know but how it, it works. But it's a I mean, and even and that's why the courts exist. I mean, legislative, executive, and judicial branches are independent of one another. But it's all based on the premise that the majority gets to create the system by being the majority through an electoral process, and the minority just has to go along with it. So, I mean, you know, the, the recent soda ban in New York just got overturned by the court because it was, it was absolutely a, a, a terrible decision to do. It took away rights, fought it in court, got it repealed. It doesn't exist anymore. Right. Same sort of principle at the state level. If the state does something that's absurd and it, re and it removes rights from citizens, then the citizens, then it's up to the citizens to take it to the courts or up to the courts to decide that that is a right of the individual and the state needs to back off. Why can't we just start by respecting the rights of individuals and not have this, this democracy concept where majority rules? Then how do you, how do you accomplish anything through, through government if you don't have a government? Well, we don't accomplish it through government. That's the point. We accomplish it through the market, through free markets, through freedom, through people interacting peacefully. I mean, doesn't that sound like a better option than having the coercive monopoly of government in charge? The, the free market is definitely, definitely very important, and I'm a firm proponent of the free market. I'm, you sure? Yes, I, I assure you. But not for, not for courts, not for police forces, and, and not for all the things that you think are functions of the state. No, I see you're taking what I'm saying and uh, immediately pushing it to the extreme. Did, did I say that I'm that I'm not uh, for free market intervention or free market activity in those arenas? Well, you no, said I that said you said that there should be a government. I said that the state government needs to exist. There needs to be something to to uh, handle. I mean, it's, they've got to enforce contracts. They've got to do that kind of stuff. I mean, that's I'm stuff saying I'd rather have the market do those things. Why can't we have the market do those the things? Market, the market wasn't designed to enforce contracts. The state enforced the, the market's not designed. The market is the, the product of all the free voluntary interactions of people interacting in free capitalistic relations to because they believe it's in their own self-interest when they exercise that right, right to voluntary association. Uh, right. Correct. But the government exists in order to allow people to, to interact with one another on a fair level. Like that, that is, that is the, the, the primary purpose of the government is to, is to enforce contracts to provide for the common defense. Primary purpose of the government. So, so, if you, if so, you, they, 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 so you believe in a system that violates the rights of the minority and, and maybe they have a redress through some form, but that, that allows them to be taxed to support the system uh, because you think it's, it's necessary for services that you don't think the market can provide? There, the services you, you just spoke of earlier, I said, the market could provide. I didn't say they couldn't provide. I said what the government needs to do is accommodate the market in a manner that allows the market to operate in a manner that is that is uh, enforceable. Like con contractual enforcement needs to occur. Right, but we could do that through the market. And when the government takes on a monopoly on that and says we're going to tax people to support our services or like public safety through the police force, you know, we end up with all the consequences of big government. And if instead we relied on individual rights and in, in the libertarian sense, in the self-ownership sense, in a philosophical sense, and in a true belief in freedom, we wouldn't have all these negative consequences. And I think as a conservative, uh, a lot of conservatives now are, should, are, are seeing that, that being more philosophically consistent will actually lead to more freedom. Right, but that doesn't. I, I still disagree with the fact that you think that the state doesn't need to be there to enforce contracts. That is that is the basic premise of government. It's to enforce contracts. Uh, yeah. See, this is where I disagree. I think you don't have to violate people's rights in order to provide the service how, of contract I, enforcement. I think if we had, all, like we are actually starting to see in the free market, anyways, with uh, mandatory arbitration or arbitration units, you know. But the reason most people honor their contracts isn't because the government is going to, you know, lock them in a cage if they violate a contract or sanction them or steal from them in a form of a, of a fine. It's because the market dictates that if you want to be a good market actor and you want the next contract, you got to honor the previous one. So I think that's a much better check, and if anything, those peaceful, freedom-based interactions are better than the coercive ones that conservatives support in government. But I appreciate your time. Yeah, Thank sure. you so much, Rooster. Yeah. What is government? Thank you. I guess that's that. And you know what? You're living in America right now, and you're not free. It means that we need to have a different philosophy. Why do they hate us? We need to... <laughs>